Welcome, gamers. Welcome to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. We are your hosts here on this amazing day. We welcome D Dave back from, he has, he has risen from the dead. <laughs> he, was, he was RIP uh, no, okay. for a week. <laughs> for a week. Yeah, yeah it was he, a whole week. It was well, crazy. As they would say <laughs> in Australia, because I know, I've watched Crocodile, Crocodile Dundee on uh, El Rey like five times in the last week. Okay. Because I missed you. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. You went on a walkabout. I did go on a walkabout. <laughs> I did go on a walkabout. Strange you should mention walkabout. Walkabout was the name of. Uh, it was also the name of a pub in Nottingham. What? Where I spent a little bit of time on my walkabout. Uh, I spent a little time in, in Nottingham, but the walkabout pub has closed. Mm. Oh. It's been replaced by a German beer keller. Mm. I think it's a location that can't possibly have an English pub. Interesting. In England. It's kind of ridiculous. Wow. So I didn't go in there, just on principle. I thought it was very strange, though. You went on vacation, vacation, work, and... I went work. You went, went work, work. And, and participated in some yep. convention stuff. But you came back, and you don't have a tan. Most no. people go on, on something like that, come back with a tan. You actually look paler. I um, I regularly go some <laughs> lots of places where I can spend time indoors. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it is England. There probably was no sun while you were there, right? Amusingly enough, Thursday was the uh, hottest April day since 1949. Wow. Useless trivia. <laughs> Full of it. Nonetheless. <laughs> Very cool. So we're doing some big miniature paints yep. uh, today. Uh, these will be miniatures that we'll come back to periodically over time. Yep. Um, Mainly because we couldn't possibly get them all done in a couple of weeks. Or in an hour. I asked them to get it done in an hour because it's Dave Taylor and Dave Taylor is amazing. I laughed. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> uh, but Dave is working on Dragons Don't Share. It's, just, it's like a, a, vin a, a, a vignette. Um, yep. a diorama. Type. Take this and turn it around. Yeah. That huge open hole in the, in the front. Looks better from the back there. Yeah, there we go. And th these are both bones. I'm working on the um, Frog Hemeth. Or I think they're actually changing the name yeah. of this particular miniature. But um, it's pretty awesome. It is. It's uh, it's super cool. I got this from the from Reaper at Gamma. Oh right. It was one of the display pieces. I was like, oh, can I can I, can get, I get that? Can I get that? I love to paint that on the show. Yeah. And here we are painting it. And uh, you're working on this huge thing, but we're gonna break it down, I guess, into steps. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some work on the terrain first. So get that out of the way. Your um, frog hemoth looks a little bit like the um, like a raffle. From what? From uh, Star Wars. Uh, yeah. Force Awakens. Yeah, the the rolling yep. eater of all things. Yeah, pretty much. Just the, the tentacles and the more. Right. Yeah. Looks very cool. Okay. <coughs> oh, actually, I'm gonna. As you can see, this uh, this crazy piece that I've got in front of me here. I'm gonna move some things out of the way. Uh. Uh. Sure. Let's slide out of the way. I'm not gonna be painting any of the dragon today. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this. Terrain piece comes in all sorts of different sections, so everything sort of breaks down. The lid comes off there. I say the lid. The, the floor. Lid. The floor. The, sec <laughs> the second floor comes off, and so it's obviously all for sort of casting purposes. But um, it means you can get right in there and paint the interior of your ruined tower. The other thing for this, um, which is Kind of strange for me because I don't usually uh, paint with a material. I sorry, paint on a material like this. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be really good for for you for storage. Um, is that the material That's flexes? Yeah, you see, Oop. flexes there. So that means that when you um, when you're ready to store it, you can just pop it into a storage tub, and it'll uh, you won't have to worry too much about it. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to pick this piece ah, and start nice. with that. So what were some other awesome things that happened last week while you were gone? While I was gone, okay, well, I'm, I'm wearing the t-shirt of the event that I attended, okay. uh, Salute. All right. uh, it's run by the South London Warlords Gaming Club. Okay. Uh, so Salute is a huge uh, one-day uh, convention. When I say convention, it's really a, a sort of a shopping show. Okay. There are hundreds of vendors uh, selling all sorts of different things. So, um, 
games, miniatures, right. uh, accessories, terrain, um, the whole gamut. They're sci-fi, fantasy, wow. uh, primarily historical. Okay. Uh, so any, almost any period you would be interested right. in, uh, in sort of refighting, you can find miniatures for at Salute. Nice. Uh, it's, as I said, it's a one-day show. It's from 10 till 5. Okay. So it's a crazy frenzy. Um, I think they had, uh, they usually uh, invite clubs along to run games. Okay. Uh, and these games can either be demonstration games where the club, uh, club members will play the game out mm -hmm. over the course of the day on really elaborate terrain and um, beautiful was miniatures, it, was that it, sort of thing. Did you take lots of pictures? Uh, I took quite a few pictures. Okay. I'll put some up in the, in the group. I haven't posted any okay. uh, online yet. But uh, yeah, some fantastic, fantastic tables, um, fantastic miniatures there. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of companies run demo. Uh, sorry, like participation games. Okay. So uh, uh, Crooked Dice. Um, there's some guys who run a, uh, have a game called Seven uh, TV. Okay. Which is a a game that you can sort of reskin in a number of different ways to uh, essentially play out episodes of your favorite TV shows. Favorite TV shows. <laughs> yeah. Like the A Team. Uh, yeah, you could do. You could reskin it to do the A team. You could um, Doctor sort Who? of base it around. Yeah, you could, you could probably do a Doctor Who sort of thing. You could do um, the uh, the Avengers, oh, okay. the like the original original Avengers. Avengers. Yeah. Uh, not the Marvel version. Not the Marvel, no. But uh, yeah, and a friend of mine was uh, running his um, post-apocalyptic sort of reskin of Seven TV. So that was pretty neat to get to see that. Okay. Um, my friends at uh, War Games Illustrated uh -huh. were running a demo game of their upcoming game called Druid, which is kind of a Celtic fantasy kind of game. Okay. Uh, you can sort of have small war bands fighting it out, trying nice. to sort of gather spell components and that sort of thing. Nice. For the Druids to be able to cast their spells. Uh, but yeah, lots and lots of great stuff there. Very cool. I got to speak to uh, quite a quite a few different people. Uh, Steam, uh, Matt Hart from Steamforge Games, who does okay. uh, Guild Ball, yeah. uh, and uh, Phil and Joe from uh, Osprey. Got okay. To see them again. Uh, Joe asked if I was stalking him. I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he the way he said it was actually like. Am, are you stalking me or am I stalking you? Uh. And I said, no, it's definitely me stalking him. <laughs> very but, cool. Uh, yeah, lots of great stuff. Um, very exciting. So, And you didn't just go out there and do, uh, you know, play games at a, at a show. You, you also did some, uh, you talked to a bunch of different companies, right? As I did, for, yeah. Yep. For work stuff? Nothing you can talk about yet? Uh, no, I didn't, nothing, nothing sort it? of finalized yet, but okay. uh, yeah, I spoke to uh, quite a few different people. I spoke to uh, one of my friends, Mel Bowes, the terrain tutor, oh, okay. uh, about uh, the possibility of working with him on a book. Ooh. Uh, I'm all about books now. Oh, yeah. Turning everything into a book. <laughs> but uh, Mel's got a huge uh, sort of background in terrain building, and uh, he'd be sort of perfect, perfect guy to to write a, a cool terrain book. Nice. Uh, so we talked about that. Uh, I got to go to Nottingham, as I mentioned. I visited uh, with Warlord. Okay. Uh, Warlord Games. Uh, tried to pop in and see uh, Footsaw Miniatures. They're another sort of historical miniature okay. gaming company. Seems like Nottingham is the place for all that. Uh, there are a lot of... Uh, a lot of miniatures companies in Nottingham. I mean, is GW is there, right? Yep, GW is there. Uh, in the in the um, in the industry, mm -hmm. uh, Nottingham is known as the the lead belt. Oh, so kind of like that's the place. Pittsburgh might have been the like the buckle on the mm -hmm. the steel belt. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Nottingham is definitely the the lead belt. Okay. But uh, yeah, on Thursday I went and visited the uh, wa went to Warhammer World, okay, Games Workshops, uh, big sort of event hall and exhibition, okay, uh, venue. Uh, was that pretty cool? 
And that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, they have a huge uh, sort of life-size, like one-to-one -one scale Rhino, the armored transport for Space Marines. Okay. They got one of those out the front, just parked out in the parking lot. Oh, jeez. I, I think I did see the, a picture of that. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, the, the coolest thing about that was uh, they have, as I mentioned, they have this big exhibition hall where they have a lot of, uh, sort of show off a lot of history of uh, Games Workshop of, of the miniatures mm -hmm. over the years. And uh, also a lot of great um, dioramas that are anywhere from the size of this table mm -hmm. up to sort of 20 times the size of this table. Jesus. And I was lucky enough to uh, get to walk around um, that hall uh, with the, the guy who leads the team that builds those dioramas. Right. Uh, so thanks very much, James, for spending a whole bunch of time with me and um, talking about how he goes through the process of, or how he and the team go through the process of designing and, mm -hmm. and building and uh, that sort of thing. It was really great. A good Maybe opportunity. A to, yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. That's cool. Really nice. I managed to escape without buying too much, oh. which was nice. And so they have everything there. So all the Black Library books, mm -hmm. all the Forge World uh, models, oh, that wow. sort of thing. So they have a whole Forge World store. You can just walk in and pick stuff up off the shelf. And oh. Carry your credit card, weep. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, everybody everybody there was really friendly and, and very Good. helpful. Good. And, uh, I did pick up a t-shirt, uh, Necromunda t-shirt. What? That I'll... Uh, this put, sport when we do that? Yep, I'll, uh, I might even wear it on uh, Thursday. Nice. But, uh, Just so you guys know, um, Der Derek is here, Chris is here, Canon, Mini Painting Studios, Carl, Walter, James, and Kurt. And Walter did ask, did you, was it primed out of the box? It was not primed out of the box. We did have to prime these. Um, and I used uh, some Army Painter primer for this, and for for this one, I have a green, the a greenish primer, yep. and then for that I used um, the black Chaos Black, yep, and then um, Corax Corax White White, like a little bit of a zenithal, yeah, kind of prime, yeah, to get this kind of uh, kind of look there. There we go. But welcome everybody, Canon, everybody out there, Josh from Mini Painting. Excellent. Everybody that's watching, we appreciate you guys joining us. As always, we yep. we uh, love having you guys with us. Um, also, Mel says, "Hey, Dave." Hey, Mel. How's it going? Nice. That'll be. Is that Mel Bowes? Yes. Excellent. Yeah, that's Mel, the train shooter. All right. I had a yeah, it was really great. I got to uh, go up to his hometown and uh, invited me over for dinner. His wife made uh, it's awesome cottage pie. Okay. Yum. It was um, there was so much of it. It was amazing. Yes, Good is one. Dave painting terrain? Dave is painting terrain today. <laughs> Your brush is too small. It is. He says. <laughs> I I completely forgot that we were painting terrain. Otherwise, I would have brought like a. And by forgot, he didn't brush. even know. I surprised him. <laughs> I was going to give you an out <laughs> and make it look like I was at fault. No. Whereas. Not at all. It's all on him. It's always on me. So Thursday, I'll have much larger brushes. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. Someone else was saying <clears throat> the same thing, that they would not want to co color Rick's with a small brush. No, no. You definitely don't want to go with like a, a size one or a size zero. <coughs> It'll take you a little while. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh, oh, my me. goodness. Uh. Inhaling some of the fumes from the... <coughs> the paints from the primer yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah on purpose you on know. purpose deliberately of course yeah okay so i've got <laughs> just gone through and uh base coated that with uh charred brown which is uh one of my favorite colors it is one we've discussed minus <laughs> tinny tin and brassy brass brassy brass but uh charred brown's a great one a uh, great base for for browns and for grays mm -hmm. um it works well with purples because uh, it's got a sort of a hint of the the uh, gray and a hint of the p purple in it. Oh, okay. So uh, when I'm painting stone, 
uh, like a gray stone. I always like to start with, well, this is a brown, uh, as an undertone. Just gives a little bit of extra sort of warmth to the, to the final piece. It's gonna go around and hit this one, so it gives this piece uh, in front a chance to dry. Nice. Uh, it's all important when you're doing a lot of dry brushing that we'll be doing next. Oh, okay. I think Me Mel says uh, to give you minis on Thursday. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, Malcolm says, I'm on vacation in the Canary Islands, but I still yeah. can't resist watching. Happy hobby, guys. Thanks, Mel. Awesome. That's cool. So uh, I guess for Mel and, and for Malcolm. Malcolm what, what Owen. Time is it? What time is it? Malcolm there? Owen is, uh, is from uh, GW. GW. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to guess that it's like 6.15, 6 I guess. Or 7.15 7 for Mel and yeah. maybe 6 for, for Malcolm. Awesome. Yeah. Francis asks, best tip for priming terrain in the miniatures? I'm just starting. Okay. Uh, but what's the best tip? Or? What's yeah? Uh, depends on what the uh, what material it is, I guess. Uh, something like this, where it's a, a basically a non-porous sort of surface, uh, using a, prim a spray primer like GW's Chaos Black is just fine. Uh, so, or it's a really good sort of start. Gives you a lot of. Um, depth, uh, make sure you get into all those sort of nooks and crannies. Uh, something like MDF terrain, uh, laser cut MDF terrain. Uh, the MDF can soak up a lot of uh, paint. So using a slightly heavier uh, spray, spray paint is a good way to go. Something okay. like a, um, a Rust-Oleum or I just got to know I still, I still got to paint that outhouse. That sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> It's well, the, just the outside of it, right? <laughs> oh, you build it? Of course. Awesome. There we go. That's a cool little outhouse from uh, Death Ray Designs. Excellent. Hi to Austin and Joe if they're watching. <coughs> but uh, yeah, something like this. I'd uh, spray it with a um, it's like a heavier okay. paint, just because it can can there. soak up the. Uh, Soak up a lot of paint there. Okay. I'll probably come back to that piece next uh, next time. And really try and get as much water out of the as brush as possible. Also, amusingly enough, mm -hmm. they usually have like two or three of these. Yeah. Okay, so only yeah, have uh, only have one. You have the one. My, yeah. Oh. My daughter's borrowed the other two over the weekend. Nice. <laughs> So, as daughters will do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Craig says I've got the bug now. I want to make more terrain since I made that big one, and the tavern. Yes. Right. Cool. That was really nice. I, he he posted up pictures of his uh, game group uh, actually using that terrain. Awesome. And it looked great. And Craig also says I'm going to do smaller modular pieces. Now that we so that we can mix and match, um, he's going to use plaster of Paris. Okay. Okay. Cool. If uh, folks are excited about uh, getting in and, and building some terrain and uh, painting some terrain, I would suggest you uh, head on over to uh, two different Facebook pages. One okay. is a Facebook page, which is the Terrain Tutor. Okay. So that's my buddy Mel, who's in the chat. Uh, go and like his page. He has a great uh, YouTube channel for um, painting terrain okay. or building building terrain, all sorts of stuff. He's got loads and loads and loads of content. Of, uh, content okay. And there are a lot of great uh, sort of basic tutorials uh, okay. for almost everything you could possibly. From beginner to advanced. Want. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he also uh, you can also go to the Terrain Tutors Terrainiacs. Terraniacs. Terraniacs. Nice. Um, I would be the Terraniacs Rex. <laughs> Terraniacs Rex. Uh, so yeah, if you go to the try to go and join the uh, Terrain Tutor Terraniacs group, uh, again, lots of great stuff being posted by people. Um, 
So it's a great terrain. Leon has been loving my dad jokes this week. Yeah. And last week. <laughs> Is Mel's channel called The Terrain Tutor? The Terrain Tutor. Okay. Yep. So if you had to put a, throw a link in the. Yeah. That's cool. So, Leona has been uh, watching this show during lunch in the, in the break room. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is called The Great... Interior Design Challenge. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And it really gives an insight to how um, passive-aggressive uh, the Brits are in regards to <laughs> telling somebody... They don't like they something. They don't like something, <laughs> right. <laughs> And uh, I think she's been watching it because I think she missed you as well. Right. You just wanted that connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get, I get to look at uh, people designing stuff that Dave's going to be seeing while, while he's, he's, while he's, while he's away. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me cough. That's funny. My wife was watching the Great British Bake Off uh -oh. while, uh, while I was away. I love that one, too. <laughs> Oh, James says he picked up Scott Pilgrim's precious little card game. Okay, what did, what did you think of it, James? I'm going to put it up on a page called uh, uh, Rate This Game. Oh. So. Who? Renegade. Renegade picked yeah. it up. Renegade uh, in conjunction with Oni Press. Nice. Yeah. Cool thing. Oh, that reminds me. I found out when the... Uh, the store birthday party, May nineteenth. For uh, May nineteenth, exactly. Mm -hmm. for, uh, for games and stuff. Yep. Uh, Paul actually reached out to me today oh, cool. about that, and I'm like, crap. Oh, what are you doing? May nineteenth is also the same day as uh, Wizard World Philly. Oh. So. I may have to forego the party. Damn it. There's also a thing up there called the um, the Silky Psych. Right. So Silkies are shorts that military folk wear. Okay. You know? And uh, no. yeah, I know you know. You know? No. <laughs> um, and Crystal has participated in one um, last weekend. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> they're having one the 19th in Philly. When, when you say participated in one... It's like a 13-mile or 16-mile hike. Oh, okay, ready. Uh, in support of, um, you know... Better underwear? Well, no, uh, no. suicide awareness okay. amongst uh, military personnel Much to better. help right. people understand that, you know, every 22 okay. seconds, someone that is a veteran takes their own life. Right. So That's a good, uh, a good cause to be supporting, then. Yeah. And so she participated in that this past weekend, and she wants to participate in the one in... Philly, and it just happens to be the same day as Wizard World Philly. Right. And so... You'll be heading up there. Yeah. I mean, I would participate in the Silky Hike, but I am so out of shape. <laughs> a 13-mile hike would kill me. Right. I'm, I'm sure of it. Well, it's half, that's half a marathon, isn't it? Yeah. Caleb says, um, I'm, I'm actually going to do a video about the best method I found for priming bones. It includes soaking them in 90% rubbing alcohol and then drying them before using Vallejo brush on primer. Brush on primer? Huh. Hmm. Yeah, that would be great if you can do a video on that. <coughs> Mini Painting Studio says, I'll be going to the Warhammer Tavern, sort of like Warhammer World, in Texas when I head to ReaperCon. Right, nice. yep. Yeah, ReaperCon is one of those events I, I want to attend one of these days. Just because, one, Reaper Miniatures, as you can see, we are painting Reaper Miniatures right now. And they've been very supportive of our, our, our yep. programming uh, as well and, and everything we're doing here. So we want to make sure to give them some love. Yep. And I'd love, again, I'd love to go to their show. That'd be so cool. <laughs> it would be cool, definitely. definitely. But yeah, I think, um, I think it's, I'm not sure when ReaperCon is exactly, but uh, I think the the grand opening of the Warhammer Citadel, uh, which is the uh, the sort of the U.S. Warhammer World okay. version for uh, of Games Workshop, is uh, like June 9th and tenth. 
Nice. Could be wrong. But uh, yeah, down in. Um, is it Austin? No, no. It's uh, I think it's Grapevine, Texas, which is right near Dallas, in the Dallas. The Dallas it, Fort Worth area. Dallas Fort Worth metro area. Okay. Uh, it's being run by another guy I know, uh, Mick. Jagger. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Oh what? my goodness. Who was? I knew, I knew you knew him. Who was actually in the? <laughs> no, he was uh, he was at Warhammer World like the day after me. Was he really? Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh man, you planned that. <laughs> I did. It's like, I can't go down with Dave's there. Sounds like there'd be too much awesome in the room. You just like to make stuff up, don't you? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> there we go. It's looking great. So basically I'm using, um, using a mid-gray here, which is uh, basalt gray from... Um, into the, in the shot there. Basalt gray from the Vallejo model color range. Um, it's gone with a fairly uh, light dry brush at the moment. He's, there's still a lot of that um, brown showing through. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been fairly consistent over the whole model. What I can do, can do now is come back with a sort of a heavier dry brush of it and hit sort of the top half. So everything from sort of here up. Okay just to lighten that up a bit, reduce the uh, amount of brown that you see. It's kind of funny, was it a building character last week? Someone actually asked if the, this was the frog kind of behind us. All right, okay. Yeah, I was like, I, <laughs> yes, it is. Somebody spotted it? Yeah. And it was also like, oh, yeah, we need to be painting that guy. Oh, that's what triggered it. No. Nah. I don't get triggered. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but, uh, Is it on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursdays. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> okay. This is, must be kind of tough to you need to catch all the angles at the right time. <laughs> it's one of the things with. Um, Particularly with like dry brushing and particularly dry brushing large um, sort of surfaces, mm -hmm. you want to keep your brush moving around. You don't want to go back and forth in a very regular sort of fashion because you okay. might get streaks oh, okay. across your model. Uh, but if you're hitting it from different angles, you see my the brush is moving around really quickly. You can avoid that um, that streaking. If you do get some streaks on there, just go back and do it, do just it. brush over it. Okay. Yeah. But always try to change your angle as you're uh, as you're working. So there we go. How does that look? People liking that? Yeah, I'm liking that. Heck yeah. Cool. This look great with some um, some flock. Some, like some court flocking, mm -hmm. um, sort of glued up here, make it look like uh, a creeper vine or oh, something yeah. like that. Where you put little tufts of grass working out there. From like the, the train stuff that we used before? Yeah, from the, uh, the alley painter yeah. tufts. Nice. That'll be good. Right. <clears throat> so what have you guys been doing this past weekend? Everybody out there? Uh, in the universe, or, or what are you ex excited for this week? Oh, I know what you're going to talk about. Neil Diamond concert. That's right. <laughs> Neil Diamond. So, did you get front row seats too, Johnny? I'll be sitting there holding your hand, Dave. Sweet. Ah. Uh, I'm excited. We know. We know. Oh, Avengers, right? We My know. bad. My bad. <laughs> we were wrong, Johnny. Avengers. The Avengers. Who's excited for that? Who's going to watch it this this week? <laughs> Johnny's going. Shane says I'm still thawing out from a trip to Chicago I took a few weeks ago. Is that Shane? Oh. Uh, um, Bowler. Bowler. Yeah. Shane, uh, you need to come up here ASAP to the studio. Let me know when your uh, what your schedule is like. <laughs> Private message me. Uh, Want to get you in in studio. James says Something? he's gearing up for an expo. He leaves tomorrow. Nice. Who? 
Um, and Carl's been working on a car model. A car model? I'm learning I'm not a modeler. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of... A uh, race car conversion. Okay, what sort of scale is, uh, is Carl working on there? And then Josh asks, what are you fellows painting? Uh, we are painting, where am I, so the box go? That's right over here. <clears throat> there we go. This is what Dave is painting. He's, yep. It's called Dragons Don't Share. Is the, it's the uh, um, heroic scale miniature vignette suitable for painting and playing by Reaper Miniatures. Nice. Part of the Bones series. Yep. And uh, it's pretty spectacular. It is amazing. So I, I'm not working on the dragon just yet. But uh, just on the the base, there, mm -hmm. the, the ruined tower, which is pretty cool. Yes, it is. Yeah. So I think, oh, there we go. There's a whole, a whole bunch of uh, smaller minis in there. There we is. get you uh, what, work working on those. those. Yep. Well, my thought was, uh, not this week. Also, bye, James. Oh, oh. James is leaving? Yeah. Bye, right. James. Enjoy your expo. And have a good rest of your day at work. Um, doing building character yeah. around those. Oh, around those guys? Yeah. Okay, that'd be cool. Definitely good. But we're going to be doing a, a different... We're not going to be doing D&D &D this week for no. building character. No. What are we doing? Star Wars. Oh, cool. Excellent. Because, you know, Solo yep. the movie's coming out soon. And it is. I think it'd be kind of fun to... Uh, do some Star Wars themed stuff again. Yep. Uh, Mini Painting Studios has been working. Um, Craig says y'all should make a bar next. A bar? Mm-hmm. And then... You did that one. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. We did the tavern from uh, Whiskids. Oh. The Rusty Dragon? Yeah, the Rusty Dragon. What was it? Was it like three or four months ago or something like that? Yeah. Yep. Oh. BL. Before Leona. <laughs> yeah, that's an actual thing. It's a time, it's a time, it's time scale. scale. Yep. <laughs> Those are the dark days. <laughs> yep. uh, Caleb says, I've been modifying a troll from a Burger King toy with the green stuff, and I'm going to paint it up for D&D. &D. Nice. Awesome. Sounds pretty cool. And then Carl says it's a 1 24th scale. Oh, okay, cool. Yep, they're pretty big. 1 24th scale card. It's like, like yeah. Oh, that sort of size. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of details in those kits. For sure. Um, okay, so what I'm doing down here, uh, you can sort of vaguely see in the distance is uh, some uh, taking some of the, the basalt gray and mixing in some ivory, so I can lighten this up to give us a nice sort of edge on the uh, on the stones. Does, but the uh, rather than going with, I couldn't just go with a like a light gray here. There's a uh, layer of light gray, or even a little bit of white. But the ivory uh, is nice and bright, and it just continues that warmth that we've got from the the browns underneath. So, nice. Also, Shane says that solo trailer looks incredible. The new one that just dropped looks sick. I think that's the one he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, where freaking um, Lando Calrissian opens it up with, better buckle up. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's good. I think they're about two or three years behind in the UK. Oh, yeah. yeah. Considering that's where it's shot. <laughs> where? Hmm? Where in the UK is it shot? Pinewood Studios. Pinewood? Oh. Pine tree. Pinewood. I think it's Pinewood. Pinewood yeah. Studios in, uh, I think it's west of London. Could be wrong, but that's where uh, all of them All of them have been shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly um, all the interiors. Right. They do location shooting, uh, you know, as necessary, but at different spots around the world, but, yeah. Josh asks if you've seen the Venom, Venom trailer. I have. The new Venom trailer, where you actually get to see Tom Hardy in as Venom, and it, it also looks really good. That's why when they first did the first trailer, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, not my Venom!" I was like, "Just wait, it's the first trailer. Come on, give him a chance." 
and here and then they did and they brought out the camera. I liked home. the first trailer. Yeah, the first I remember was fun. telling you. I was like, I'm excited about that yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a lot of this rage and it's like, why get nerd ragey over freaking something that you haven't seen all of it yet? And well, even then it wouldn't be nerd rage otherwise. Ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that last one wasn't even really a full trailer. It's more of a teaser trailer, it which was. is designed it was a teaser trailer. to was... tease people and get people talking about it. Yeah, but they all had to, they're all like, I want to see Venom. He did. He's right there. He's right there. <laughs> I, think they, I think they did flash him. Like, they did like a flash of him. They did a the thing costume. at the end where you saw the shape of Venom. Yeah. Okay. And like the, back, you know, a bleed in thing. Also Does he have Craig, a lot of, oh, I wonder sorry. if he has a lot of lines. Oh, Tom Hardy? Tom Hardy, yeah. He doesn't like a lot of lines, I think, in his movies. No. Yeah. I think he, the only one where he um, had a, a lot of lines was uh, the one where him and Chris Pine are fighting over the affections of uh, Renee Witherspoon. They're both, like, CIA agents or whatever. And, and Reese Witherspoon? Re Reese Witherspoon was this <laughs> girl. Chris Pine and Tom Hardy were right. CIA agents okay. that were partners, but... They both kind of fell for her and started like, <laughs> just right. being, you know, as yep. comedy ensues. Right. Craig says, "I'm still waiting for it, Chapter Two, and Godzilla, King of Monsters." Ooh. Uh, on the plane, I actually watched it. I think it's called Spy vs. Spy. Does that sound right? Mm, no, no. So this means war. This means war. Never mind. This means war. Okay. What was the Tom Hardy film where he played the Cray Brothers? Uh, Legend. Legend, right. So I think it was yep. Legend. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. He spoke a lot in that. Yeah. He did a good job. He That's spoke fun. a little bit in, uh, what's that other one where he plays the, uh, is it Bronsky or Bronson? Yeah, Bronson. Where he's uh, this guy who's in Britain who gets put in jail, but just likes to fight and just okay. is always fighting the guards right. and stuff. Okay. I was kind of disappointed by the Tom Hardy Legend film. I mean, like, no demons or unicorns or anything. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no goblins, no blicks. So, um, one inch heroes and Nick ask about the minis that you're painting. Okay. So if you could just refresh that, like, what is that ruin from? Uh, the ruins from uh, Dragons Don't Share, mm -hmm. the uh, a big sort of vignette from uh, Reaper, part of the Reaper Bone series. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, oh, the rest of them are up near you, actually. In addition to all of this terrain, which I'll just bring in here. Oh. Oh. Box full of stuff. So there's a dragon. Can we see the dragon? There we go. The dragon there. We have the wings of the dragon. Yay. And end up with a whole pile of stuff in front of me. And then there are one, two, four, five adventurers, which I'll scoop and put onto the, the table here. Which we're going to have to put them up and have people who, you know, come up with uh, the building characters of these guys. Yep. Because we will do episodes based around these characters. So there we go. With those. And the dragon head. Roll. Nice. I kind of don't want to glue the head to the actual stat thing. So if, yep. if a party ever, like, does it, you can oh, be like, that's take, the take the head as a trophy. Right. Check that out. It's a cool picture inside the box. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, I am working on, so they called it the Frog Hemeth at uh, Gamma, but I believe that they were going to be changing the name of this miniature. It is, as far as I know, this is currently not available. Okay. It's um, one of the upcoming either Bones 4 or even further. Oh, wow. Okay. Down the line piece. So you're getting to paint it early. Yes. My goodness. From what I understand. Okay. Um, I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, somebody at Reaper, please tell me that I'm wrong and that I should go back to school and get learned. You're, <laughs> you're wrong. Maybe not about this, but... About a lot of just things. Just in general. 
<laughs> yes. So, yeah. I think that's, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty good for a start. It looks amazing. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just go around and, and paint up the, the, uh, the tower first, and I think I'll do the ground all at the same time. Okay. Um, just that, that'll make sure it ties everything together. Right. What I can also do is, when we get to that, sort of the final stage and I put things together and it's like, oh, they don't quite match. Then I can pull out some washes mm -hmm. and in those, where those two areas sort of come together sort of around here and around here, right. I can put some washes on to make that, to blend those it. joins oh, okay. sort of blend. Nice. Which would be pretty cool. Also, one in Chiro says, sweet shirt, dude. I mean, Dave, <laughs> not dude. 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 <laughs> he says yeah. Dave. He said Dave. Mm -hmm. You said dude. I said dude. Dude. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, so this year, 2018, is the centennial, so okay. the final centennial year of World War I. Uh, okay. The poppy is a big, so it's a symbol that's used in a lot of, uh, particularly a lot of Commonwealth okay. um, observances of uh, Remembrance Day, okay, November 11th, uh, also originally known as Armistice Day. Right. So uh, each year salute has a, a theme, and this year it was Lest We Forget. Oh. They had a uh, sort of a display area, and they had a large... Um, sort of mock up of a Mark One tank. No, oh. not Mark One. Mark Four. Mark Four tank. So one of the very early tanks. Okay. That would have been used in the battlefields of uh, World War One in 1917 and 1918. Wow. So that was pretty, uh, pretty cool to see. I can see that as being yeah. pretty cool. One of the uh, actually. I just also remembered one of the games that uh, that they had there. Somebody, oh, it's club had put together a uh, salute game. Okay. So it was a gaming table, and on the gaming table were 28 mil scale gaming tables, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of them. And then it had they had vend like trader stands, vendor stands. Okay. In there, and so on the. Ta the tiny tables, they had mm -hmm. uh, GW's like Epic miniatures, which was six millimeter okay. scale yeah. on there as the, <coughs> the guys fighting on the table. Uh, they right. had some really nice sculpted tables that you would see it, the right. kind of thing you would see at Salute, but just shrunk down. To just 124th, you said? Uh, no, to, um, well, to 28 mil scale. 28 mil. So. Okay. Uh, but basically, the idea was you were a, um, a Salute attendee. Mm hmm and you had to go and collect your pre-order from one of the, um, the vendors. One of the vendors. <laughs> and, okay. then, and then escape the hall because, before the zombie hordes got you. That sounds amazing. That was pretty cool. Pretty exciting to see. They also had, um, they'd spoken to a whole bunch of different companies mm -hmm. um, around the place and uh, got some product, mm -hmm. got some uh, different bits and pieces. So all of uh, the army painter supplied them with all of their paints. Okay. So everything on the table was painted with army painter paints. Uh, but they also talked to them about different cool ideas uh, for uh, cards to play, or the, that your character might get played on you. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like the uh, Beasts of War team. Okay. Uh, so Beasts of War have a, a, or a sort of media YouTube channel that uh, do a lot of coverage of shows. Okay. And they were at Salute. But if you got the Beast of War card played on you, you were slowed down for a turn oh. while they stopped, stopped you to interview you. <laughs> oh, so how's Salute going right now? Gotta get out. <laughs> gotta get out. Uh, but it'd be things like, um, is it a game or is it a zombie? You can't quite tell mm -hmm. because um, they're both stinky. Oh, wow. It's a card like that. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the game looked fantastic and uh, the guys had a lot of fun. Good. Obviously, I had a huge amount of fun building, the, like creating the game. I think uh, everybody who played in it had a lot of, a lot of fun as well. I bet, which was awesome. Escaped, escaped the game. Yeah. 
Very cool. Yeah, I uh, I didn't have as much fun as you this past week. No, I didn't. While you were out having all doing all that stuff, but uh, we missed you. Yeah, we missed we missed being able to talk about your Kickstarter. Oh, which was successful. <laughs> it went well. Yeah, it did it go well. Good. Yep. So if you guys missed it, is there any way that through the backer kit can people still pledge to it? Yep. Um, basically, I'm. Uh, Getting started on putting that uh, the pledge manager together. Okay. So the uh, back end pledge manager, and hopefully uh, May twenty first we'll mm -hmm. be able to roll that out. Nice. Uh, so all of the the backers will be able to make sure we've got all the, the correct information for them for shipping right. later in the year. Uh, and yeah, anybody who missed it is, will be able to get in with a with a late pledge. Okay, cool. Which should be good. Very cool. Uh, so. Yeah, quite exciting. It's uh, I've started putting together the the uh, page planner mm -hmm. for it, um, getting everything organized on my computer so that I know exactly where I need to put all of the photos and right. text and, and that sort of Doing thing. Doing all the layouts. Doing all the layouts. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah it's been one of the advantages of uh, of jet lag and insomnia mm -hmm. is that I've been able to. Well, I've not been able to wake up at 2, but I have been waking up at 2, <laughs> 2 a.m. Okay. And not being able to go back to sleep, so I just sort of get up and okay. take care of the... A few things? Sort of the housekeeping stuff. Okay, Like cool. getting everything organized. That's awesome. So, fingers crossed that'll go away soon. Not be able to get like a full night's sleep, but... <laughs> you have kids. Until then. <laughs> well, they usually sleep through the night. Lucky. Yeah, I know. I have cats, I mean, I have kids, but right. I have cats. Yeah. They don't allow me to sleep through the night. Right. <laughs> it's like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> as the four cats chase each other throughout the oh. entirety of the house. Right. So I get up and lumber about. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> I, can see you as a, I can see you as an ogre. Yeah. Yeah. Big ogre styley. We only have one cat, so... Does it not get the crazies? Oh, it gets the crazies and runs up and down the hall at two in the morning. But yeah, nobody else seems to notice that. Just me. Yeah, yeah it's weird yeah. how that works out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I have four of them. They like to fight each other and chase each other around the house, and you'll hear them. And what's funny is the two that are the most aggressive are the little ones. Right. You know. Tigger and Aria, and they're like, they want to attack Ghost and Jack, and Jack and Ghost are big, big cats. Right. But, like, Aria, who I don't think is going to get much bigger than, like, this, <laughs> she's so tiny. Right, okay. But she'll, like, sneak up on them and, like, bite them on the freaking haunches, and yep. I've actually seen, like, Ghost jump, like, a foot in the air, <laughs> and she sneaks up and bites them. Hang on, so you got Ghost, Aria, Jack. Jack. Well, Captain Jack Harkness. Captain Jack Harkness. Yeah. Uh, Ghost's full name is Ghost the Dire Kitty. Okay. And then Arya from Game of Thrones. Is Arya Stark? I was going to say. Stark, yeah. And so Tigger, just because he was born with a hook tail that kind of looks like yeah. a little piglet tail. Right. So, you know, the spring. Yeah. Right. Okay. Bouncing around. Yeah. Okay. But he's big, big, fat, and lazy now. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. These are coming along pretty well. Yours is looking amazing. Uh, it's getting there. I'm gonna put it in front of the. Uh, I think it'll look. Well, it'll look a lot better once the uh, finish them up and put the the basing down. Put that to the side. Oh, I've got to mess with my overhead cam. Sorry about that. There we go. That should be good. Yeah. Once we get all the sort of basing down. One thing I'll point out, just in the corner here, of um, and go to the overhead, is there's like a little treasure trove. Okay. In here, oh, there's I didn't like little notice. pouches. There's ah, um, the loot. Coins. There's loot. There's a shield. There might be a, like a breastplate. The things that a dragon will not share. Yep. Nice. So pretty cool. Yeah. You want to go along and pick those out? 
Okay. Yeah. So I'll get a bit more brown down. I think maybe on uh, Thursday we'll get started on the dragon. Woo. Yep. That should be great. Amusingly enough, I bought a, just recently bought a, a whole bunch of Vallejo reds. Okay. So I can mess around with those. It would be a good opportunity to talk about red. It would be. As yep. painting and doing shades and such. Yep. Well, I think with the, with this one, it's it's quite a bit of texture on the, the dragon. Not so much on the wings, but on the dragon, there's a lot of scales. I'll probably mm -hmm. do a lot of uh, dry brushing on that as well. Nice. So. And these will that. become background pieces in here. All right. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Just perfect. People will be like, oh, and they'll be like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Juan Enchiro awesome. says that base is looking sharp. The hmm? base is looking sharp. Yep. Your base. This base? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. It is. Yeah. I think this, uh, I think it does look, uh, looks really good on the front cam. But, uh, Kind of the reason I broke it up a little bit to, um, rather than just going through and painting everything brown mm -hmm. to start with, was just to uh, a make it a little bit more exciting for people watching. Okay. And not also not to sort of break my brain. Like, oh god, there's another piece to paint brown. <laughs> <laughs> I figured so. you'd use your technique of mm -hmm. you know, armies. Hordes and legions. I mean, swords and legions. Well, that's that's one that I'll talk about in the book for sure. Yeah, the Is big there pieces. Ways to uh, to sort of spread things out so that you uh, this way you can see progress. Right. Really, like quite quickly. Um, now I've got two pieces finished. Well, yeah. except for the basing, but uh, right. yeah, two pieces quite done. But if I'd just gone through and done the brown all of them, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have seen that progress. Right. And it becomes a little bit disheartening. So. If uh, the way to go. you guys are role players and are looking for a new role playing game to uh, get sink Ooh. your teeth in, I uh, I just would like to shout out to our friends over at Renegade. They did just launch today at noon a Kickstarter for a game called Overlight. Overlight, yeah. Um, and I would like for you guys to go check it out. Yep. Definitely be cool. Yeah, our friend Paul Butler and George yep. down at uh, Games and Stuff are actually the ones that. Uh, uh, the creators of this world and system, and uh, yeah, you filmed the. I did film some stuff. They actually the up the fr very first update is one of the clips that we that we did film. Awesome. It was uh, the uh, where it all began mm -hmm. right. video with George and Paul. And it's already at seventy-seven percent funded. Nice, excellent, good work. Indeed. All right. And Carrie and I have our book coming out in June. Nice. Which the uh, the Overstreet Guide to Tabletop Gaming. Collect, collecting Co tabletop games. Collecting tabletop games. games. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Everybody's excited doing a book. That. It's all about books. I'm telling you, <laughs> books where it's at. Some say print is dead. They're wrong. They are so wrong. Wrong. Those people are not right. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I completely say that. Excellent. Won't quite get all the brown on these today. But that's gonna be fine. You're fired. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be fine, but apparently <laughs> not. Remember, I said if you couldn't get it all done, you're sent to the fires of Mordor. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we build the fires of Mordor. The terrain. That would be cool. Yeah. 
seen some spectacular uh, Orthanc builds. What are Orthanc? Orthanc is the uh, is um, Saruman's tower. Oh, okay. The big obsidian. Um, mm -hmm. The black blade. The, yeah, lots of blade kind of. Yeah. Uh, buttresses and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I've seen some fantastic builds for like twenty-eight mil. Absolutely, look absolutely awesome. All right. But, uh, sorry, just thinking about Lord of the Rings. I was too. As you do. As you do. Oh, Walter says Dave would make a good golem. Uh -huh. Sure. Totally. Like, golem or, or Smeagol? <laughs> no, we mustn't. We mustn't kill him. We'll hurt the, we'll we hurt the hobbitses. <laughs> Oh, they've been so nice to us. <laughs> we're, what, we're the same. We are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Can we refilm that sequence where he's looking at himself in the water, but it's you two? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we can't. Papa <laughs> shot. <laughs> yes. Yes, we should. No. No, we shouldn't. No. We shouldn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just Dave looking at himself in the water. It's like, do I really look like that? <laughs> Yes. I do. <laughs> it, it could work. It could work. I think so. Maybe we have to I was it. just thinking about how it would be amazing if you had like a hand, uh, like a glass blown eyeball for All right. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, it would be super expensive, but like how that would look really cool. On top of that tower. On top of this tower. Mm -hmm. Yep. The tower you're talking about. Mm. Yeah. I think the um, they're probably out there. Mm. I'll check Etsy. There you I go. Find a lot of crazy things on Etsy. That is a fact. <laughs> yep. Oh, um, Annette is wondering what primer is used for these pieces. Uh, the frog hemoth. I used a. Uh, green army um, army painter primer. Is it uh, necrotic flesh or something like that? I think it was necrotic flesh. Necrotic flesh. I think that's the color. Um, and then for the dragon and the terrain, for the um, dragons don't share piece that Dave's working on, I used um, chaos black, and then I uh, did a dusting of uh, chaos white. Corax white. Corax white. Yep. Sorry. And also, do you know that what the stands are called? Uh, that are holding the webcams? Scissor stands. I Scissor believe. stands. Okay. And that was also wondering. Yeah. They also, uh, they originally from desk lamps, right? Or these per cust purpose uh, purchases? No, I think so. They look like the same kind of thing that you would put desk lamps on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're basically retrofitted to put these webcams on there. Right. Cool. <laughs> but, uh, so from a desk lamp. Mm -hmm. Desk lamp, yeah. I'm actually considering bringing in my big circular magnifying lamp. Yeah? Yeah, just because, you know, blind. You're getting you old. Yeah. You're getting old, Rick. I old. Am. Well, the, um, the funny thing is that it wasn't until I got here that I realized I'd forgotten to bring my glasses. <laughs> so part of me was like, oh, we're painting big things? Woohoo! I just have to do a dry brush? Awesome. I'll remember them on Thursday, though. Dave doesn't realize he's been painting in pink the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Without his glasses, he can't see color. I can't see colors, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Or the future. Or the future. Yeah. <laughs> I can only see Johnny's future, short as it is. It's very <laughs> bleak indeed. <laughs> there we go. All right. So we're... We're there, We're ladies and gentlemen. Time, yeah? It is time. Yeah. All right. I'll put this bad boy over there so you guys can take a peek of gander upon him. <gasps> the frog humans. He doesn't fit on my. He doesn't fit on the spinner. No, but my uh, uh, Elon. Your Elon Musk, Musk spinner. <laughs> spinner. That's because it's not a miniature. It's, it's a, a bigature. It is a bigature. 
Yeah, there I it like is. I like the colors. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So uh, make sure if you guys are enjoying these, uh, these scale, uh, this scale of miniatures, the big stuff, Reaper does an amazing job with big scale miniatures for fantasy settings and yeah. and uh, post-apocalyptic war settings and remember that big tank looking howitzer thing oh yeah the, the sledgehammer the sledgehammer that sledgehammer is crazy cool it is. Uh, but to go over to reaperminiatures.com and check out all the cool stuff that they've got um it's, it's ridiculous and you can also find a lot of the miniatures at your friendly local game store um yeah. so you can pick them up and add them to your collection and get to painting some miniatures i believe um Josh at Mini Painting Studio does a day, one of the days of the yeah, week. Reaper Friday. Reaper Friday, Friday. yeah. So he, he, he does a Reaper miniature. So check that out as well. He usually pr puts that up in our group. Rawr. Uh, that dragon you, is monstrous. You, you can it's be the mother amazing. of dragons. I am the mother of dragons. <gasps> yes, Khaleesi. It's a fact. That's right. My I am the sun and stars. Moon and stars. I don't even know what they said. It was in Dothraki. It was in Dothraki. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can forgive that. <laughs> it was high, in High Valyria. High Valyria. Then, then you should have known that. But. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, go to your local game store. Check out Reaper Miniatures. Uh, yep. This has been Painting Happy Little Minis. It has. I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. <laughs>